Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, and I have the immense pleasure of having one of my favorite guests back on for a second conversation. This is Andrea Sigatich. Did I remember the pronunciation right, that Sigatich? You did it beautifully. Yes, thank you. Um, I, was, I was practicing a little bit beforehand. <laughs> but the first time we talked, uh, Andrea is one of, the, one of the few coaches I've spoken to who has essentially gone through, gone through it all. More or less, she is a retired coach. Let me let me refresh your memory as to uh, who Andrea is before we get back into the conversation. Um, Andrea opened her coaching business, Sage Coach, back in 1997. She's logged over 10,000 coaching hours working with executives, leaders, and entrepreneurs. She also teaches for CTI. More importantly, and we've talked we talked about this before I hit record. She lives a well balanced life up in the high desert. Loves to hike, and apparently soon renew her passion for backpacking. Uh, she's visited all 63 United States national parks and remains, first and foremost, an adventurer, which is just, I love that so much. I remain an adventurer. I just wanted to say it again. So Andrea, thanks for coming back on and chatting with me again. It's really good to see you. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you very much, Kevin. So I was, I, was, I mean, maybe blowing smoke a little bit up your butt, but I was just, I was speaking admiringly about your your coaching journey and how you have, at least in my experience so far, having talked with at this point, almost a couple hundred coaches, particularly for wow. the podcast, you have a very unique perspective, having really been through the entire coaching journey professionally, um, having your own business, coaching for so long, coaching so many different types of people across an, an area of time. I mean, I'm thinking about 1997 and how differently the world feels when I kind of summon up my memory of 1997 in my head across the board. But I think especially the coaching business has evolved so much in the last, I mean, it's evolved so much in the last five years, let alone the last 25 or 30. So um, you had a lot to say that I hadn't really heard before or not a perspective that I hadn't quite gotten before on how the coaching business has evolved. So I think I want to start you out by just teeing you up and seeing what you have to say about what What's maybe the most significant evolution you've seen in the coaching business over your time in the business, in the trenches? Well, you know, it's really interesting because I'm still teaching for CTI. I get I get to interact with brand new coaches all the time, too. And, yeah. I, and I'm learning a lot from them. So I, I, my answers are twofold. One is that I, I mentioned it last time. The word coaching is like people know what you're talking about. And and so, you know, the old coach jokes that were that were around um, are, are not are not, not not quite so funny anymore. I mean, pe people generally know what it is. Certainly in in business, they know what it is. But the second the, the second big change is the technology. I mean, mm -hmm. absolutely. When I when I learned to coach, we always coached by the phone, uh, by phone. You know, maybe maybe once in a while under certain cir circumstances in person. But now coaches are using are, are seeing their clients, you know, on on the screen, and I think that's. That's a big difference, I think. That's a really good point, too. I mean, especially the the ability to have have everyone's got a camera, access to a camera. Pretty, I mean, it's it's kind of weird to think about it that way, but everybody's basically got a camera on them or very nearby at all times. Yeah. It's still, I'm still getting used to it, and I'm, you know, <laughs> it's been around for quite a while. But that ability to, this is one of the reasons too. Like this podcast is an audio only podcast. Obviously, when people are listening to it, they won't be seeing us, but we get to see each other, and that's something I always. I always like to to mention um, when I'm interviewing people or when I'm talking to anybody is even if this isn't going to be going anywhere that people are going to see, I like to be able to, you know, change my facial expression and raise my eyebrows. And like, I'm typically like a very physical talker anyway, you can kind of see my hands bubbling around the bottom of my Zoom screen. And I like, I like to be able to demonstrate that I like to be avail like available physically in a way that's actually perceivable by the people I'm talking to because I want them to be able to understand me and also to allow me to communicate to them that I'm listening that I'm following what they're saying or that maybe like if I if I make a quizzical expression you know maybe like I didn't hear something like there's all sorts of different levels of communication now that have become accessible to us via this digital realm as opposed to just the voice and I mean it, it doesn't you say it like, oh, we have cameras now. It's like, it sounds pretty simple, but I, the change and the effectiveness of coaching in this format, I think has been a profound evolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's true. It, it took me a while to get through the change because I learned um, I, I learned to hear and to to recognize changes in 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 tone that, and changes in 
in um, expression and whether or not people were moving their hands and and if they had a smile or a frown. I mean, I learned to hear that over the phone. That's mm. the way we were taught, and that's the way I coached for years and years and years. And so when when first of all people started coaching, so where they could see so much. I, I, at first I was a little bit resistant to it as I said, well, well, um, you know, okay, but, but don't over rely on, on what you're seeing. I mean, don't, don't make assumptions from what you're seeing. And, mm -hmm. and now as I, as I've been able to watch many more coaches coach um, on Zoom, mostly where they see, I can see how they're using it and integrating it. Um, I, I think my only, my, I remain with the caution of, don't um, um, rescue your clients, you know. So it's it, because you see a frown, you, you you know you may you may that may change how you're coaching, or you may you may calm it down, or you may not confront them as much, or something. And and I want it to be additional information, but not information that that causes you to be less of a coach or less challenging or less listening at that at that deep level just because mm -hmm. you can see their face and when i teach now um i'll do some we, we do some coaching demos and i'll do some with the cameras on and some with the cameras off and then i i challenge all of my students to try coaching with the camera off and say and just see what happens and get a feel for that so that's that's I, I, again see that's, i don't i don't hear that really from anybody else that sort of <laughs> Make sure that you don't come to over rely on a particular tool or a particular avenue because it can it can obscure what you're trying to perceive. I was going to say see. You got to have to watch my terminology here because it's really about perception and what you're what you're interpreting and picking up from someone. And yeah, it's it is especially tricky because of how visually dominant human beings are. Just from a biological perspective, it's very easy to over rely on that sense anyway. And yeah. now that we have access to it, and you have this tool, and you you think that you're seeing more uh, and you're seeing, and, and that it means you're seeing better. You might be perceiving more, you're getting more information, but it doesn't necessarily follow that you're seeing more clearly or perceiving more clearly. That's and that right. depends, it's, it's a matter of getting used to using the tool. And I love that. I love that in your teaching, you focus on camera on camera off because it really does like, I mean, anybody who's just been out for a walk and closed their eyes for a minute, and the sounds of nature or wherever your environment happens to be, the way things start to come to you, it doesn't take very long, but you do have to give it just a beat. And then you're, you start to pick up on things that you didn't really know were there. You hear a couple squirrels chirping on the other side of a tree. You hear a bird flying over. You hear a plane in the distance. Maybe you hear traffic that you didn't realize the road was that close. Right. All sorts of stuff like that can emerge when you close off a sense. And so I think that's such a key exercise for coaches in particular who are who are very who are required to be very intuitive and interpretive when they're engaging with their clients. Um, a, yes. a mistake here or a mistake there could lead could lead you down a false path that could take you know a long time to get back from. Yes, I, I, so when you when you see when you add that sense in, um, yeah, turning it off does I believe raise the um, intensity of your hearing as you just described. But I also want to talk about from the client perspective. The first mm -hmm. time I faced this was. Um, a long time ago, I was coaching a, a CEO, and I was coaching him in person. He he lived by where I live, so I, I'd be in his office every week, and we'd coach. And then I moved, and he said, "Well, does that end our coaching relationship?" And I said, "No, we're going to do it over the phone now," which is the way I coached most of my clients. And what changed in him was remarkable because I no longer read his nonverbals. He had to articulate what he was feeling, what he was thinking, where he wanted to go, and in the coaching. And he said, "This is better," you know. And I happen to think it is. But but he got better, and he got he 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 became better able to uh, notice what he was feeling, thinking, doing, and, and communicate that. And I feel like that that touches on a, a concept that's very near and dear to my heart and in and, and any of my like creative or communication pursuits as I've moved through life is that limitations aren't necessarily limiting. Sometimes limitations of form or format can mm -hmm. actually be uplifting or focusing. Um, and I, I think about like times I've tried to write, you know, a novella. Whereas like I could really excel in the short story format or something like that, where it's like the limitations of like word count and you have to like, just the, the way in which the format changed my approach allowed me to pour myself into whatever the thing I was trying to create was in a different way 
that accentuated different aspects of who I was and what I was trying to express. And some things worked better than others based on subject matter as well as format. Sometimes my mood would be such that it wasn't really the right, like the format I was trying to communicate in wasn't quite right. Sometimes what I could say in 15 seconds on a phone call will take me 30 minutes to type out in a short email. You know, it's like, which one might be better? Is it like, and how will the person receive this? Like, would it be better for them to be able to read this and have the time to consume it? Or is it going to hit them better if I say it to them in real time and I'm there to respond to any questions they might have? All these considerations, it, my, mind, my mind starts to go all these different places that these things that we think of as limitations can actually be amplifiers or guides or focusers. And it's really, again, case by case basis, some people, it's going to be better to be communicating with them in a certain way. And for them to communicate with you in a certain way, it's going to bring out the best in them, which mm -hmm. again is sort of, I mean, if, if you could, if you could summarize what a coach is trying to do, <laughs> bringing out the best, whatever that, whatever that means for a person is something that a coach is, is, is passionate about. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. That's very fascinating. I, I love considering, I love considering tools, both from a classic perspective, like the tools you had, the tools that are tried and tried and trusted, you know, they've been put through the ringer and they work. And then some of the things that are new that people just kind of adopt and maybe haven't properly considered how to use, like we have a very limited, a very uh, two dimensional understanding of how to deploy them. And when sometimes it might be good to pull away from some of those, some of those tools like a zoom and maybe just here, I'll, you could see, you could see Andrea, I could, I can move my little my little lid right there. I have a, a physical cover for my camera lens because right. sometimes you know, I just want to just close that down, but just making sure that I have, have an awareness of the usage of the tools I have at my disposal and using the right tools for the right job, mm -hmm. so to speak. I feel like I keep just conversing with you and I was like, I gotta come up with questions. This is really great <laughs> stuff. But now I'm like, my mind, I'm like, I'm dizzying with the, with the, with the, with the potential of where this conversation could go. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, oh, another thing too, this is something that came to my mind earlier in the conversation when you were talking in particular about Zoom, um, but even before that, how we were just talking about the way the technology has changed and evolved coaching in a way um, that I feel like we're still just really grasping and Zoom is obviously one of them. And kind of related to that is the ability to, to reach people at different places in different times, like to record a course that could then be like available online yeah. or to like put together something that someone can rather than have to attend in person or attend at a particular time from a particular time zone, someone in India or, or, you know, Japan or somewhere in Europe or in Africa can watch something that was recorded, you know, five days ago in California and be able to access a level of whatever it is being taught or trained. And I feel like that has really it's, a new, it's another tool for the amplification of what a coach can do, that ability to reach people in a, you know, it's different, obviously, from the one-to-one -one coaching that a lot of people get their start mm -hmm. at. It's different from the other mm -hmm. formats, but it has that ability to reach more people in a way that's still impactful. Right. Yeah, I, I think that's true. And again, um, you know, there's a there's an age and experience difference here. Um, a lot of coaches are a lot younger than I am, and, you know, are making just great use of the technology that that way. And that also makes me think about um, th that while those, mm, you know, while having having your your blog post or having having a video of you can can certainly um, engage people maybe invite people in, maybe new clients. I don't want to lose sight of the referral process. And so I want to talk just a little bit about the referral process because, because coaching is so unique. It's so, it's so individually focused. Um, it, you will build your business um, through referrals. I mean, I mean, that's, that, that, that's, that's going to end up being your primary source. So one thing I did, I don't know, about 10 years into my into my business is I, I went and looked at my client list and I looked at who referred them. And then I looked, okay, well, but who, you know, okay, so who referred Kevin? All right, well, Kevin was referred by Sam, but who referred Sam? Sam was referred by Carla. And I found out that five people had built my whole business. Hmm. And uh, that just kept going up upwards. Um, now, again, I had the advantage of working in organizations, but those five people all held the job title, vice president of organization development or vice president of leadership development. And so yeah. I said, oh, I guess I know who my people are. And I began <laughs> to just completely target my, 
my marketing to those people. You know, so when you have enough experience that you've had a few referrals, look at the commonality, you know, who are you really resonating with? And those people are, are, you know, the beginning of your referral network. That's I, 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 in, in my head, the words success detective just went across the back of my eyes. I was like, you were like uh, a success detective. It's like, so I've, so I've gotten to this point. Like, I wonder why. And you start like running your fingers back along the, along the timeline, along the genealogy of your, of your, of your coaching clients. Right. And yeah, I, I feel like if any, anybody who engages in that, who's been in the business for long enough and engages in that like detective work is going to find probably something fairly similar that there's a certain small subset of clients that are at the heart of their entire business network, their client yes. network, and that they probably have one or two things very much in common. Yes, that's sales. right. That's right. And you might go back and discover that it's salespeople or it's engineers or it's or you know whatever it is. That doesn't matter except except it helps you to see. Okay, so what's the language of those people, which I obviously <laughs> talk well already, and I you know and 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 why don't I just interact there? you know, to look for more clients. So that is, I mean, I, I, I almost said this out loud, not intending the pun at all. I almost said that's very sage advice. I didn't mean to make the pun, but it came into my head. And so I'm just going to own it. I'm going to, I'm going to own up to the fact that that was a very corny pun, but nonetheless, very true. It's extremely sage advice for people. Cause a lot, of, a lot of people are, they feel like at least, or at least they'll express to me that they're kind of feeling around in the dark for understanding the why of what they're doing, like why things are working and why they're not. They kind of understand that certain things work and they kind of have a, at, at the very least, an intuitive understanding of how they connect with people very well. And they have systems and processes, but there's this like core, not disconnect, but there's this core mystery I was like, why exactly am I connecting with the people I connect with? And it's, it's one of those things where I feel like the information is there once you've been in the business for long enough, there's just enough that you could just look at. And I just, I really feel like it's such a, a good, a good exercise for an experience. Actually a coach really at, at almost any level, obviously you have to have some information to work off of at first, but I feel like it's yeah. just a, such a good, like it should almost be a part of like a yearly practice in my head. I'm, I still have, I'm still having January thoughts, which are very like end of the last year, beginning of the new year. So I'm still thinking about like, should do this all the time, thinking about forming better habits. And this, this feels like a good exercise for just making sure that you're staying in touch with who you're serving well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's something that I, I believe you don't have to have experience in a particular profession to coach someone in that profession. I, I mean, I absolutely believe that. Um, but your experience does help you get in the door. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and knowing, and like knowing the language, like, so I had done all this carpet work, I'd done all this human resources work, and I knew the language really well. And then um, my husband trained and certified as a coach, and he was a, he was a 40 year nonprofit executive when he started. And so he would speak to potential clients using words, I didn't even know what he was talking about, you know, <laughs> so, um, so I had to get a little bit of educated, just on like what their language was before I could work with a nonprofit exec, because just the languaging so it was so different. Yeah. And that moment of when, when someone speaks your language, whether that happens to be industry terminology, yeah. or if someone makes a reference to like a book or a movie that you like very much, or like you make that reference and somebody gets it. It's amazing. The leap that your relationship takes if that happens just once or twice. It's just because you really, you begin to feel like that person gets me. A person understands me, even if that journey still has a long way to go before that's actually true. Just that moment of just showing, demonstrating to someone that you do a little bit speak their language. I mean, even if all you could do is ask for directions to the bathroom or the library in that in their language, you know, extending the analogy, that goes such a long way towards building the kind of trust that's going to be at the foundation of the coaching relationship. Right, right. I I know I said this earlier on. I really love talking with you, even like especially love talking with you. I just I. Just, I mean, the obvious reasons: your experience, the way you're able to communicate it. You're, you clearly are a teacher, and you have, you have, you have a teacher's approach. I love the way your mind works. I just feel I don't, I can't put my finger on it exactly, but I have just, I really, especially even amongst all the other coaches I get to talk to, I've really enjoyed talking to you again. This has been, I don't know, I feel like I have a lot to think about, and also have a lot of my suspicions confirmed. Is that, is that, is that, is that, is that so great. Right? Like, all this makes so much sense. <laughs> Can I put one one more thing in the in, in, into the into the air here? Because it keeps popping into my brain. There is this woman on um, a Facebook group I'm on of coaches who is asking about significant relationships in your life and whether or not your 
spouse, partner, kids, whatever it is, support you in being a coach. And, and the responses to her question, I just keep thinking about them. And, and where it has taken me is, um, you, you mentioned this, I think it was before we, you turned on the recording, that you know once you're a coach, you don't like shut it off to talk to your spouse or your kids, or even though sometimes they want you to put the lid on it, you know, there, there's still <laughs> sort of a way that you be in the world that doesn't go away. And I just keep thinking about how important that is for relationships. Um, and and I, I don't have any bottom line, but but mm. you may find yourself, I know I certainly find myself gravitating towards people who are coach-like, who can mm. still listen well, and who can ask powerful questions. Mm. And the other people in my life sort of drift away because it's it's not enough. It's just not enough to share a a movie if you can't have a beer afterwards together and talk about it, you know? <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. I, I find that my exposure to coaches and coaching makes me it just makes me a better human being in general because of the because mm -hmm. of the way my values shift in that direction. And I mean, you lay it out and it makes perfect sense. It's a good listener, is very empathetic, able to um invest in your well-being without having any sort of personal yes. stake in it. Yes. Just there's and there are certain like just human interaction tools that have just like muscles that have been developed that are strong in a coach. No. That it's, it pays it pays such dividends in all of my relationships all across the board. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And right. I, yeah it I, does, I it does do that. Right. And sometimes people lose relationships. I, I lost a couple. Sometimes people lose relationships as yeah. a result of of that focus on. Yeah, I really do care about your growth and development and you having a happy and fulfilled life. You know, yeah. like, I really do care about that. You know. And, you know. Yeah. What we talked, we talked about it earlier in the conversation, how important fit is when it comes to coaching. It's right. like, not every coach is for every person and not every person is for every person. Sometimes people come into your life. Sometimes they fall away. It's, it's natural. It that doesn't say, that doesn't mean it's not difficult sometimes and sometimes not painful, but it is natural. It's just mm -hmm. a part of the process. And so I like, I like, I like our process. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's great. One of my, one of my clients, Paula was her first name, taught me a reason, a season, a lifetime, and that never goes away. It's a, it's a good thing to remember. Yeah. It is. It is. Well, as I suspected, time has flown. I've already had you for 25 plus minutes chatting, oh. so I should let you go. But I, again, thank you for talking with me again. Thank you for, for who you are. Not just what you what you've done and what you do. Thank you for who you are. I just appreciate that you exist in the world and that I've gotten to talk to you a couple times. And yeah, if you don't mind, I might I, I'm I I could see myself reaching back out to you in like May or June and just having like a little summer check in and just you know have some new questions. I have some new new things that have occurred to me and chat again. I don't know. I'll I'll let you know if I I mean I probably will want to and I'll probably reach out. But I just I've so much so enjoyed this conversation. I've so enjoyed the last one. Thank you. I think I'm just a long way around just saying thank you again. I just really Great. appreciate that we got a chance to talk again today. <laughs> Great, thanks. And to the audience, you you know Andrea, you've heard her before. She's fantastic. Great person to know. If you get a chance to talk to her, take advantage of it. It's delightful. Um, she's happily retired. She's backpacking, you know, somewhere in, in America in the next couple of months. I'm really excited about that for her and a little bit jealous myself. Uh, but we'll talk about that offline. And we'll talk to you again here very soon.